So just want to say welcome, welcome to all of you. I am really excited to be here. So let's turn up a little bit. Let's get a little crunk. Let's have a little fun. I want all the graduates right now to unabashedly, unbridled, just applause for what you have done today. No, you can do better than that. Now give some for every family member who has been through it with you, stayed on the phone when you freaked out about finals, kept your kids if you had to stay in the library too long. Give them some love as well. And lastly, let's turn it up for the faculty. I'm a CUNY graduate, so I know that the faculty that you have here are some of the best, the brightest, and the most diverse that you will not find anywhere else. So turn up for the faculty. I thought about the type of speech that I would give today that would be memorable enough for you all. And I thought about some of the recently lauded commencement speeches, such as the one in which uh, the speaker told the, student, the uh, graduating students that they were not special. I'm not gonna do that today. <laughs> I am here to exalt your greatness and highlight your specialness. I don't know almost any of you personally, but I know your stories, because your stories are my story. I know what many of you have had to overcome, confront, work around, and barrel through to make it to today, to this point in your life. I've had to work very, very hard to get here, to graduate, to be able to stand in front of you. And because I recognize these stories, because I understand the challenges and the sacrifices, I am honored. I say proudly, congratulations. And I know that you are indeed special. I know that as we have all struggled, we may not realize that our most, education, our most amazing educational ally, as we gained our undergraduate degrees, graduate degrees, and certificate degrees, have been the CUNY system. For me, it was transformative professors like Regina Bernard or Arthur Lewin. But I also know that one of the reasons that this place is so damn fantastic is because of folks like you. You come from all walks of life, black, white, Asian, or Latina, New York, or based in San Antonio, Texas, unmarried with children, or coming back to finish a degree and realize a dream once put on the back burner so that you could raise your children. You are the soul of the CUNY system. You are the richness, the muscles, the tissue, and the blood that gives this system life, making it one of the most diverse in the country. Love Muffins, we are unrivaled. <laughs> yeah. Now, I too am a CUNY graduate, hence the bias. It took me six years, two children, an on and off history with welfare, a short stint of homelessness, and creative childcare arrangements, including the Early Learning Center at Baruch, to graduate. And Baruch was my third college. <laughs> what you have done here today is no easy feat. I walked across the stage much like this one in 2006. And let me tell you a little bit about what it took me to get across that stage and then actually end up here in front of you. I had my first child at 22 and my second at 23, both while trying to pursue my undergraduate degree at Baruch. I was pregnant so long that I bumped into professors on campus, confused, not entirely sure how one could be pregnant longer than 40 weeks. I faced some insurmountable struggles during the time I was in school. Childcare was a constant struggle, and parenting was even harder. Was I even parenting? I dropped my children off at 7 in the morning while they were sleeping and picked them up at 9 or 10 p.m. when they were sleeping. I missed their first steps. I didn't potty train them, and I didn't hear them utter their first words. And it killed me every day. But in my bones, in the pit of my stomach, I felt. No, I knew that what I was doing was the right decision for both me and them. I 
I would be the first of my siblings and currently the only one of them to graduate college. I would be realizing a dream I would be realizing a dream that neither one of my parents, my mother a teenage mother, and my father one of the smartest blue collar men that I knew, had the opportunity to. That was important to me. So I made the pledge after I made the decision to be a young mother that I would realize the one thing my father, who ended up raising us alone as a single father, wanted the most for me. And that was to graduate college and actualize the potential of my best self. I wish he could have came tonight to see this. Shortly after having my children, I knew I needed to find housing for my family, and I found myself gentrified out of Harlem and into the South Bronx. Now, I love my community, but that love was a journey. When I first arrived there, I was exposed to pollution, a culture that wasn't the one I grew up with, lack of good food and poor air quality. And I just knew that my degree was going to change all of that. I was going to graduate from Baruch, and I would get me a good corporate job, and it would just fall down like mana from the biblical skies. <laughs> and after six years, food stamps, welfare, a failed relationship, two kick-ass daughters, and a slew of random jobs, I walked. And the corporate job did not fall. <laughs> In fact, I found myself bouncing from one corporate job to another, working as an assistant and hating it, hating myself and the people around me. Now, I'm not dumping on the corporate sector. What I'm saying is I wasn't happy because I wasn't sure how to leverage this education I had fought tirelessly for. I was locked in an abusive relationship with my longtime lover. His name is Fear. In that moment, I decided it was time for Fear and I to break up. Glass ceilings be damned. If opportunity wasn't going to knock, then I was going to build my own damn house and invite the mother effer in. <laughs> what seemed like chance, but in hindsight was most likely destiny, I found an organization called Mothers on the Move and learned about many of the cycles that continue to be perpetuated in my community of the South Bronx. Environmental racism, the community degradation, and the sexist and classist policies that keep women like me or less fortunate than me trapped in poverty and marginalized. These systems that shepherd our wonderful, inquisitive, magnificent children into the prison industrial pipeline and parcel off our land to companies that don't pay it forward and a system that increased the likelihood that folks in my community wouldn't have access to quality, healthy food. In my work, however, I got to meet the people in this system. And I realized that these were people who were trying to break free, who had broken free, those who didn't even realize they were in a system or didn't have the language to articulate how that system affected them. My people are resilient, black and brown, young and old, citizens and immigrants, documented and undocumented. They help bring the South Bronx back from the very brink of death, arson, and crime. They created homes, they planted trees, they created organizations, they taught art, and they saved themselves when nobody else was interested in saving them. They lived. And it was there that I too found inspiration and started living. A chance meeting with South Bronx environmentalist Majora Carter changed my life. I managed to get her cell phone number, and after much pacing, phone calls where I called but hung up before she picked up, and talking to myself, I decided to be bold. I called her and I asked for a job. Three months later, I was the outreach coordinator at Sustainable South Bronx. And do you know what I learned, my little love muffins? <laughs> I learned to be bold, to take risks, to live fearlessly. A phone call and an ask. A phone call and an ask changed the trajectory of my life. I owe much to Mothers on the Move and to Majora. It was through those experiences, that, experiences, some of them good and many of them bad, that I was able to find my voice to understand that I had a responsibility to use my educational capital, my social capital, and my lived experiences to change the world and to change my world.
In 2009, after four years of community work, media appearances, a published book chapter printed in three languages, and expecting baby number four, because I'm crazy, I decided to create The Black Project, an organization dedicated to harnessing the local good food movement to create economic development opportunities for marginalized women and youth. We have Gorilla Gardened, provided mommies and children with a safe space to learn yoga. We've thrown block parties, we helped build a CSA, and we are now converting a former school bus into a clean energy vegetable mobile. It's like an eco version of Pimp My Ride. <laughs> this market will provide jobs, build community, and provide folks access to local, high quality, affordable produce, produce and food. I have gained national visibility. I write for ebony.com. I speak all over the country and have four amazing, precocious children. I am no longer trapped, but I do exist in a world of code switching and duality. I finished this speech at the food stamp office. I live in the same apartment that I have for the last 10 years, and life takes a lot of planning and still very much struggle. But I am inspired because I am living life mostly on my terms and I am changing my world and the world around me. So I tell you all these things not to brag or toot my own horn. Okay, maybe I'm bragging a little bit, toot toot. <laughs> but really, I stand here today in awe, inspired and humbled. I share my accomplishments to impress upon you that if I could do this at 32, as a single working class mama of four children with my CUNY Baruch degree, you can too. In a smaller, globalized, and fiercely competitive world, your degree is the first step. But honey, your ability, abilities to be staunch in your determination, fearless in your approach, humble yet confident, and take bold, calculated risks will allow you to soar. As I wrote this speech, it reminded me of one of my most favorite Nina Simone songs. Birds flying high, you know how I feel. Sun in the sky, you know how I feel. Breeze drifting on by, you know how I feel. It's a new dawn, it's a new day, it's a new life for me, yeah. It's a new dawn, it's a new day, it's a new life for me, ooh, and I'm feeling good. Today, today is your day, and tomorrow is a new day. A day to start over, to be bold, to be courageous, to be inspired, to kick ass, take names, and return phone calls. I am proud of you. You inspire me. Your accomplishments are plentiful and your potential is infinite. You, my love muffins, are special. Namaste.